my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day and welcome to this quilting tutorial for Heart Flow. So this starts kind of like a heart on the, like a heart balloon <laughs> on the end of a wiggly tail. We stitch up and form that heart shape. And now I'm gonna pivot off that point and swing around it for an echo. So this is a branching design. We're forming what basically is gonna kind of be like a lock of cartoon hair uh, with a heart on the end. So now I just travel stitch and then echo around that. And I'm gonna build up maybe three or four echoes around this shape. And that expands the design. It makes it take up more space on my quilt and it makes it stand out that much better. So there we go. And I think the easiest way to move on with the design is probably to stitch one more echo around it. So you can see how much space just one little heart flow shape can take up on your quilt. And this is something that is gonna cover your quilt really, really quickly, and that's really fun. All right, to move on with the design, I'm gonna travel stitch away from this tip, mostly because I built up so much thread right here. I have an odd little area right here, probably not enough room to stitch a whole heart shape. So I wanna kind of flow my line over this way. So let's do that. I'm gonna stitch that wiggly line and then end with a heart shape, just like so. Pivot off that tip and that tip is where I like to build up thread just a little bit, just to add a little texture, a little bit more interest to the design. And then now you can see I'm travel stitching all the way back. I can fill in this little area with just simply more echoes. So right now I'm just gonna focus on travel stitching, echoing, travel stitching, echoing. I'm just traveling against the edge of my quilting space. That's absolutely allowed. And then, you know, that might get a little bit boring filling in that whole area with just echoes. So I'm gonna just change the shape. What we're gonna do is pretend like maybe there was another heart flow going off in another direction, you know, and it's just off the edge of the quilt. You can't see it. So I can just change the direction and stitch some echoes going that way. But I hope you can see that this is definitely gonna be a design where you build up thread, you get a lot of practice echoing and a lot of practice travel stitching. That is what it's good for. And practice makes perfect. You might not stitch it perfectly the first time, but I promise you, you stitch this on an entire quilt, you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck. You're gonna really get some great practice at echoing and travel stitching. So there we go. I built up that heart shape. And then from here, this is also kind of a clustering style design as far as how it fills our quilts. I'll branch off here in another direction and form another heart flow shape. That heart on the end of a wiggly line, like a heart balloon, just like so. So now that we know how to stitch it on a small scale, let's give this a try on a real quilt on a much bigger scale. So now I'm on my Cunique 21X Elite long arm and we're giving heart flow a try. And I'll be honest, I have never tried a design like this, a design that's this complex on my long arm. And I'm, I'm just gonna go on ahead and apologize for it not being absolutely perfect. Uh, it's one of those things that control comes with time and practice and yeah, it's not gonna come out exactly perfect, but I'm really pretty happy with that so far. All right, I don't have a lot of space, but I'm gonna try and do one more echo. And part of the problem that I've had with a few of these heart-shaped designs is the fact that I you know, have these, these little narrow areas to work in in this chain of beads quilt, and it's not quite enough space. But here in this little weird area, I can just go back and forth echoes. And then that was gonna allow me to travel stitch out and get to an area where I can then form a full shape and really be able to expand it. So there we go. Let's swirl out and we're make a nice long shape. Remember, a long flowing line and then our heart-shaped balloon. So basically like a balloon on a string. Now swirl out, bump, bump. Swirl all the way back. Now I got a little too fast there. My machine blinked red at me, so I gotta be careful. You know, it's so easy to swing out on this echo, but I wanna keep it slow and controlled. Even though my echo didn't stay consistent, 
I think my stitching is gonna end up looking a little bit better. We're gonna go with some back and forth echoes through here, a little bit of travel stitching. I keep holding my breath <laughs> every time I do that. I'm gonna branch off in another direction here and do a few back and forth echoes just to fill in this like weird little gap area. You are gonna end up with weird spaces. That just happens. You know, we quilt our quilts. The quilting design is meant to flow over the surface. Um, you know, the quilting, the, the piecing design is usually the main star of the show and the quilting design has to fit around it, you know, fit and fill. And that means that you're gonna have to sometimes wiggle around and get into tight spaces and kind of figure out how you're gonna quilt this. And don't ever hesitate to travel stitch back over a previous line that's absolutely allowed in this design. And there goes my thread. So I actually ran out of top thread, which is really unusual because I usually use really big spools of thread and I had finally run out of one that was several years old. So that was a really good thing. And I'm gonna squirrel my way out here, getting around, filling in that area all the way. And I think I'm gonna shrink my scale down. I actually think that this will look better if I try the heart flow on a smaller scale on my long arm. Now, this is a design that does want to expand and have a lot of space between those lines, but I think in a tight area like where I'm quilting it, it needs to be a little smaller. This is gonna be a great design for all over quilting. If you've got a bed quilt that you wanna just stitch it up a notch, get this nice flowing texture, it's gonna be a great choice for that. But whenever you have tight areas, you're gonna have to shrink the design down in order to be able to see that texture, in order to be able to stitch it and have it look nice. This is just my opinion. You know, looking at it, picking out some stitches, really studying what the design looked like, I just really wasn't quite as happy uh, stitching it on this quilt as I have been the other heart designs that we've tackled. And I'm being perfectly honest, you know, I can look at my stitching and be a little bit critical of it and say, yeah, that probably wasn't the best choice and that's okay. We can't know these things until we actually stitch it out. And I know that I have definitely learned something here today. And for that, I am grateful. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you'd like to find more videos, free motion quilting on both a home sewing machine and on a long arm, come and check out my website, leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.